Hello! I've recently been feeling a bit low because of the endlessly dreary weather that we're having in Melbourne at the moment. It is winter, so it is expected. So what better way to combat that than with colour and lots of it? Specifically, Caran d'Ache Neo Color 2 water soluble crayons, 84 of them in this gigantic tin. I've had this for a few years and I've been dying to review it, so today is a good day to do that. Let's get into it. Now I've had these since early 2018 when my husband Nick went to Switzerland on a business trip. I mean, honestly. <laughs> But he didn't come home empty handed, he brought me back this gigantic tin of crayons and it's absolutely gorgeous. I'm not sure if they've changed their design on the tin recently. But otherwise, this is what the tin looked like a few years ago. You can also get smaller tins as well, in particular sets of 10 and 15 and I think there's also a 30 and possibly a 48 but these little tins are absolutely fantastic for travel and they fit into travel bags really well there's a set here that I've just picked up because I've really been wanting to get a set of 15 for my travel bag I'll talk about that in a later video today I'm going to be looking at the biggest set that they currently have which is 84 they used to have a larger set I think that was in the hundreds but they have since discontinued quite a lot of colours, which is a real shame. Never mind, I'm still super happy with this. There are heaps of colours in here, and so I'm going to open it all so we can see what they look like, and then I'll swatch everything. And now we open up to these incredibly gorgeous crayons. I have a feeling that mine are all out of order because I have used them a bit. It doesn't look like they've been used very much, but a little goes a long way with these crayons. They're really great quality and they're a little expensive, but they are value for money. So they come in a plastic case inside a metal drawer, which I think is really great. So if I lift those out and we have another layer underneath, these ones just sit in the tin down the bottom. Here I have the big book of colour charts and inside is a couple of pages here with Caran d'Ache Neo Colour 2 and all of the colours just waiting to be swatched. Now they have put these into numerical order but the order of the numbers is not actually the order of the colours so I'm looking at this and they've got the whites to black up here and then it goes into yellow and down here there's just some random colours that are just not in any kind of order so I think what I might do is swatch them out on this paper dry just so I can see them all and then I might do a second swatch and paint them out because this paper does not take water it is hopeless it's really thin I'm not even going to bother trying to paint any kind of gesso over the top because that's just going to make the paper go all crinkly as well Normally I tend to rearrange my colours so that they match the charts in here, but not this time I don't think, because I don't like the fact that there's a red, a blue, a green, what's going on here? <laughs> Speaking of winter, look at this guy. He's got his winter coat on and his mane is so huge at the moment. There is so much fur on this animal and it's all going to be coming off in spring so I'll be looking forward to that. But he has pinched my chair so I guess I will get my other one to sit on. <laughs> I'm just quickly swatching them out in the book. As I suspected, they're all over the place and shortly you will see how little sense they make when put all together. Browns mixed in with yellows and oranges and I really don't like the placement of the greys here. But as I said, these are in numerical order and they just make no sense. I wondered if it was due to colours being introduced or removed at different times in the whole timeline of the Caran d'Ache Neo Color 2s. That doesn't seem to be very logical either, I don't know. For the most part, the big book of colour charts has actually been really good for ordering colours, but they really dropped the ball on this collection. Never mind, I guess I can live with it, kind of. I just won't look at this page too much. They had also mislabeled Malachite Green as Malachite Blue, so there's a little typo as well. But hopefully already in this quick swatch you can see how vibrant the colours are and this is just when they're dry. They are going to look quite different again when I add some water to them. Oh this last line absolutely killed me, they're just all over the place and so aesthetically displeasing, I can't stand it. Well this possibly makes sense on some universe but definitely not this one. 
don't know what on earth is going on in this line especially. So I think I'm just going to have to sort these out and make a much more cohesive chart than this because this is really confusing. But that's how it was in the book. And here's definitely a lesson that just because they're in numerical order does not mean that they're in color order. So that's always something to bear in mind when you're looking at different products. Sometimes they do match the colors with the numbers and in this case they do not. <laughs> I've painstakingly ruled out a new chart on Fabriano paper. This is 100% cotton and it's a hot press. So hopefully this will work a lot better once I add water. And I also want to do an artwork on this paper, so I figured I might as well do the chart. I've organized them into tray one and tray two because it's just easier and it makes more sense. So when I'm painting them out, they might look a little funny because I have some fleshy colors over here and then my reds are over in this area, but it does kind of make more sense I think once we look at them as single charts like that. But of course I've made a mistake because I missed a lime green and a sapphire blue. That sapphire blue is supposed to be there and I'm not doing this again because the paper's expensive. It took me forever to do this one so I'm just gonna have to live with it. In this swatching session I thought I had the colors in a pretty good order and some of them do look really good together but what I found as I was swatching them out with water is that they do change color a little bit and therefore some of them actually end up looking quite different and not where I thought they would be placed. So much for having a perfectly organized chart here. Some colors really do defy placement. Never mind, I will get over it eventually. <laughs> I guess I should talk about the Neo colors a bit more. I realized that I have been calling them crayons for this entire video, but actually they are called pastels on the box. So they are a pastel, but honestly they look like crayons to me, so I will probably continue to end up calling them crayons. And that periwinkle blue is completely out of place. It looked a lot more purple until I put it next to the purple ones, and then it's actually a lot bluer. <laughs> it should have gone a bit further down the chart. But so far the colors are really pretty. I love the pinks and purples in this set, as well as the blues. This Prussian blue especially is lovely. It's a bit annoying that I forgot to put in sapphire blue. I just skipped over that crown for some reason, so I'm putting it in now so I don't forget. And that is a far more thalo blue. They used to have a thalo blue pastel and they discontinued it, which is super annoying. Thalo blue is one of my all time favorites. So are Neo Color 2 pastel crayons light fast at all? Well, I had a look on Karen Dash's website because they actually have charts of everything and all of the colors have a light fast rating, which I forgot to put in here, but I'll just let you know a bit about it. They each have a rating of either one, two or three stars. Three stars is considered the most light fast or excellent. Two stars is very good and one star is good. Perhaps I would consider one star maybe a bit less light fast. So I have not done a test and I cannot tell you for sure. But of all of the 84 colors, there are 12 which are considered to be one star of light fastness, which is the least light fast in the range. These colors are saffron, russet, carmine, ochre, olive brown, mauve, purple violet, lilac, ultramarine, periwinkle blue, sky blue, and turquoise. I think it's quite odd that colors like ochre and ultramarine are only considered one star. It's really strange. But otherwise, all of the other colors are considered to be very good or excellent, and so I don't think I would have any issues using these. From my experience, I would say that using the crayons with a thick layer is not going to be much of an issue when it comes to light fastness. It's once you start to dilute them out and create really light washes that certain colors can fade quite quickly. Overall, I would say these are pretty good. And for now, I am going under the assumption that they are light fast and I'm taking Karen Dash at the word here. It might be interesting to put some of these up in the window. Gosh, I have so many products I want to test out and it's hard to do them all because I only have so much window space. Look at these gorgeous reds though. I really love the yellows going into the reds. I think it's a pretty spectrum. And also there are quite a lot of greens. Once again, I had that lime green out of place. It should have been between the yellow green and Chinese green. Ugh, what a drag having those two at the bottom. There are also a lot of nice earthy colors and browns. 
And there are three metallic pastels, gold, silver and bronze. I actually intersperse them in with colours that are similar to them. So the bronze is next to that cinnamon and also the russet. I've got the silver in with the greys a bit later and the gold I think I put under the Chinese green because it's kind of a greenish colour. But those are quite nice, they do have a metallic sheen to them and they dilute in water just as well as all of the other colours which is great because sometimes metallics can be quite problematic but these ones don't seem to have much issue at all. That beige is another colour which I didn't really know where to put because it's kind of grey but also brown. It's like a warm grey really and doesn't really have a home beside anything else. So it's going there and then I added in all the other greys and silvers to it with white at the end. So overall I think my chart's a bit better but there are some imperfections in it which are really bugging me. Apologies if they're annoying you too. I did try my best to put them in a better order. And here we have it. All 84 Caran d'Ache Neo Color 2 crayons swatched in perfect color order. <laughs> well, all right, not exactly perfect. <laughs> Especially not these two. How annoying is that? Let's just kind of hide those. So what I think I'm going to do is move this out of the way so that it is not so super annoying. And I am going to make an actual artwork with them. Let's get into it. Oh my lord, the artwork. Okay, well I'm starting this off not actually using the Caran d'Ache Neo Color 2 pastels and instead I'm going in with a background of Schmincke Payne's Grey Watercolor and that's because I have found in my experience that most water soluble things like pencils and crayons will leave a bit of a mark on the paper and so for backgrounds I wanted to have a nice smooth finish here. You can see it's gone really patchy and that's because I'm on hot press paper and it was drying so super quickly. So I've actually done a couple of layers of watercolour on here just on the background because I wanted to get a fairly dark colour to offset my bright colours which I'm going to use with the Caran d'Ache pastels very soon. Can you tell what the picture is yet? So after I'd let the paper fully dry, I went in with another layer. I'm using Perylene Green and Payne's Grey just to get a really deep background. And it's still a bit patchy. I think I had to go over it again with a third layer after I'd finished everything else because I did get a bit of background with some of the paint and it was bothering me. But anyway, I'll just quickly finish this little bit and then we will get onto the actual drawing. Hooray! <laughs> Okay, finally I'm using some Caran d'Ache Neo Color 2 pastels. But honestly, I'm so glad I used that watercolor in the background. It's so much faster. So I went over everything with a light layer using a lot of different colors, in particular blues and turquoises, and also some orange a bit later on parts of the kingfisher's plumage. It is a kingfisher, by the way. <laughs> So you can see as soon as I add the water, the colors just explode into this beautiful color. And that's what I love about them. They also dissolve really well in water and I was able to pick up almost all of it. There was a little bit of texture left, but I would say it's less so than watercolor pencils. Even the Caran d'Ache Museum Aquarial pencils leave more residue on the page. At least from what I remember. I do actually have those as well. I need to review them too. Let me know if you want to see that. I just love the oranges in contrast with those cool blues. I think it's really pretty. So moving down to the lower half of the picture, the kingfish is sitting on a log which has this huge rose and here is where the whole thing started to fall apart. I drew the rose in but I kind of lost it a bit when I was coloring over with the crowns and it just looks like a huge cabbagey mess. <laughs> it's a total disaster if I'm perfectly honest. Look at the state of it. I didn't know which petals were which and it just ends up being really confusing. But once again, the colors have blended out quite nicely here. And I did go over everything with the second layer because I find that multiple layers really does bring out that color intensity. In the reference picture, there were also some little apple things and some leaves, which is what all those funny blobs are down the bottom of the picture. It was from a photo I saw on the free reference photos for artist Facebook page. It's a really beautiful one. There's actually another photo as well that's of the same type of thing. And I'm thinking about doing it as an oil painting, but I for some reason picked this particular one for the Caran d'Ache Neo colors. 
even though it's in portrait format, and I foolishly decided I was going to go large, so it's an A3 portrait, it does not fit on my camera, I can't get my camera high enough to fit the whole thing in without getting all of this other stuff on my desk, so that's why I'm having to film it in little segments. I don't know what I was thinking, sometimes I forget that these things need to go on camera. So I'm going back up to the top to do another layer on the Kingfisher and get in some more of the details. It's a little bit more challenging with blunt crayons because you can't really get super fine lines, but I did my best and I ended up using only the Caran d'Ache Neo colours on the drawing which I'm quite pleased about. I was tempted to get some coloured pencils to add in some of the details, but at this point the wax layer was getting really thick on here and I figured that pencils probably weren't going to work very well over the top anyway. But oh my gosh, this painting took me forever. I had to put in another video in between because I just could not get this done on time. It took me probably about 12 hours I would say over a few days because it's only so long I can sit and look at it before I just go insane oh my gosh why did I not do it in a smaller format and of course I had to add in as much details as possible so it was quite a struggle and it really pushed me to the limits of my capabilities it's not perfect there are things that I would like to change about it in particular the rose but otherwise I think it turned out okay the colors are really beautiful I loved using the neo color two crowns although they are more difficult for me than watercolors it's a more challenging medium and so I need to keep trying with it keep practicing and hopefully I will improve with them but overall the quality of them cannot be beaten they are so beautifully made and they do blend together really well so honestly any mistakes on this painting are the fault of the artist not really the materials <laughs> Okay, I am calling it done there. This took me ages to finish and I should have done a smaller picture so it would fit on the camera better. I had quite a good time with this. It was quite frustrating near the end, but the colors themselves are really beautiful. The crowns are really beautiful and they work extremely well. So the quality of the Neo Color 2s is really high and they are most excellent to use. So let me know in the comments what you think of it. Have you used Caran d'Ache Neo Colors 2 and would you consider getting them in the future after seeing this video? Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up because that always really helps my channel and click that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. And I will see you all again really soon in my next video. I'll swatch you later. Bye.